Welcome. Today we are going to talk about some special angle pair relationships and we're going to have a quick lesson on English nomenclature and how messed up it is and how much better math is than English. Ha, I'm a little biased though. All right, let's jump, jump in by starting with special angle pairs. The first one we're going to talk about are perpendicular lines. I feel like this is very familiar to you for so many reasons, but one of which is that you studied this in algebra and you did lots of work with perpendicular lines and how their slopes are related. And just as a refresher, you will remember that perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. We will continue to talk about that a little bit more in some future units, but you don't need to worry about it too much today. I just like to activate that prior learning. In geometry, an upside down capital T is the symbol that we use to represent lines that are perpendicular. Math people are fundamentally efficiency experts. You could call us lazy. I think efficiency experts is a good word. And we do not like to write out big, huge words when one little symbol will suffice. Perpendicular lines are two lines that intersect to form a right angle. And I put a very important note here, folks. You'll notice in this technical definition of perpendicular line, the number 90 is never used. That's going to be important as we continue working with perpendicular lines in unit three. Perpendicular lines, by definition, give us right angles. It is the definition of right angles that tell us that the angle measure is 90 degrees. Perpendicular lines will never directly give us angles of measure 90 degrees. It seems silly, it's a technical difference, but it will come back to be very important later on. All right, these problems involving perpendicular lines are not crazy complicated. In this particular case, we're just asked to find the value of x. This is a super simple problem. I feel like um, if you look at notes online, I took it to a new level and actually did a geometric proof with this using the concept of per perpendicular lines giving right angles, giving 90 degrees, and I stepped through that process there. I'm not gonna go to all of that detail here today, just simply because uh, we have a lot to cover today and I wanna get right to it. So I know that the measure of NOR based on those three definitions is going to be 90 degrees and I can use substitution to show that this angle is really equivalent to the algebraic expression 5x minus five. From here, I do some simple algebra, 5x equals 95, x is equal to 19. Not a complicated problem, but I do want you to realize that I have glossed over all of the steps that involved actually coming up with that angle measure. All right, let's see what else we can come up with to talk about today. All right. Some other interesting angle relationships that exist can be created by intersecting lines. So if I have two lines that intersect, they intersect at exactly one point, we talked about that the first day, and in doing so they create four different angles or six different angles or seven or eight. There's an infinite, there's a lot of angles here. I've identified some of the ones that we're gonna talk about today and I've used color to do that. The first type of angles that we are gonna talk about are adjacent angles, and I have lots of examples over here. Adjacent angles are just angles that share a common side. So in my picture up here, any orange and blue angle would be considered adjacent angles. And sometimes it helps to cover up so that you see the angles. Those angles are adjacent. These two angles are adjacent. These two angles are adjacent. And actually over here, this is not in your notes, but I drew it over here. These two angles are adjacent. Angle A, B, C, and angle, there's a windstorm, angle C, D, C, B, D. Those are also adjacent angles. Another angle relationship that we talk about a lot are vertical angles. Vertical angles make Vs. And in my picture, they have to be the same color. Vertical air angles are um, technically two angles whose sides form opposite rays, but I just like to think of it 
as um, they're just on opposite sides of each other. And then additionally, I'm going to cheat and show you another way that I sometimes think about vertical angles. Sometimes I think about vertical angles, excuse the crooked lines here. Vertical angles are those angles that make bow ties, right? So if you can make a bow tie with the angles actually forming the knot of your bow tie, then you know you have vertical angles. It's a silly example, but it works for me. The other type of angle that we talk about or other angle relationship are linear pairs. And we actually do a lot with linear pairs in geometry. A linear pair is a set of angles that are both adjacent and make, um, whose sides make an opposite, whose sides are opposite rays. In my brain, I prefer to think about this as adjacent angles that are also supplementary. They make a straight line. So in this particular example, these two angles are a linear pair. That tells me that they touch, they share a common side, and their opposite sides, are, or their sides are opposite rays. More importantly, folks, this is helpful because um, it tells me more about the angles than just saying they're adjacent. It gives me some specificity about their angle measure. And more than just saying that they are supplementary, it tells me also that they are connected. These two angles, while adjacent, would not be a linear pair because they are not supplementary. Their opposite sides do not form, or their sides do not form opposite rays. I've already talked about this angle relationship and you learned about it in previous years. Supplementary angles are angles whose measures uh, have a sum of 180 degrees. And I put an important caveat, they do not have to be adjacent. So while this picture shows adjacent supplementary angles, they don't have to be adjacent. And I think I drew a picture of that on the next page. We'll get to it. Complementary angles similarly are two angles whose measure have a sum of 90 degrees. And that is why I drew this picture up so that I could show you that ABC and CBD are complementary angles together. Their sum adds up to 90 degrees. Okay, so what does that do for us? That gives us um, a couple of different theorems that are gonna be very convenient for you to know. The first of which is the vertical angle congruency theorem, and we use this a ton. Vertical angles and then angles that are opposite of each other and formed by two intersecting straight lines are congruent. So that's very helpful. And then we also have the linear pair theorem that says that two angles that form a linear pair are supplementary and adjacent. So if I'm given the fact that something is a linear pair, I know two things about them. I know their measures add up to 180 degrees, and I know that they have a common side. All right, so how, what can we do with all of that? Well, here's what we can do. I'm moving another piece of paper in here. You'll notice I didn't rewrite all that stuff. Um, and here is an example where we can do some algebra and solve a geometric problem. In this case, I'm given two lines that intersect at point B, and I went ahead and colored them in so that um, I can identify them and speak to them as um, in color because my brain works better that way. You'll notice that if I were to turn this paper sideways and connect it, it would make a bow tie. So I know that these are vertical angles. I also know that there are some linear pairs in this picture. If I were to cover this up, I could see that angle ABE is a linear pair with angle ABD. They are adjacent, sharing a common side BA, and together they are supplementary, forming a 180 degree straight angle. Okay, so I wrote out the two theorems that I'm going to need to solve this problem. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna go from the vertical angle theorem to a, an equality statement, which says that the measure of angle ABE is going to be equal to the measure of angle DBC. And I have to step from congruency to equality before I can start doing some algebra. Then I can use substitution. And this is a pretty straightforward problem. I feel like most of you are gonna be pretty strong at. 
I do my substitution. They are equal to each other. And now I do some algebra. I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides using sub the subtraction property. I'm going to add 10x to both, or 10 to both sides using the addition property. And I'm left with the value of x being 30. That was one of the things that they asked me to find. The second thing they asked me to find was angle EBC, which in this particular case, ah, I'll grab a different pen. I'm going to identify this as being this green angle. Okay, so to use, to find the value of the green angle, I'm going to have to use the fact that either my blue angle or my orange angle will form a linear pair. So what I've said here is angle DBC and angle EBC are supplementary using my linear pair theorem. Based on that, I am going to be able to say that the measure of angle DBC plus the measure of angle EBC, you all see that? Pretty light. Um, together, those are going to be equal to 180 degrees using the definition of supplementary. All right. So before I, um, I can substitute in here, I have, I know that this is 3x. I know x is really equal to 30. 3x minus 10 is my algebraic representation for the measure of angle DBC. I do not know the measure of angle EBC, but I can solve this problem by multiplying. 90 minus 10 would be 80. Uh, I'm going to do this equals 180. I subtract 80 from both sides and I end up with a measure of EBC being 100 degrees. And there we are. We have used both the vertical angle congruency theorem and the linear pair theorem to identify the measure of an unknown angle. Pretty cool, huh? All right, I'm going to skip example three because it is almost identical to example two. And I feel like that's something that you can try on your own. Feel free to check the answer key or the notes key that's posted online to see if you solved it correctly. And instead, let's move on and do one more example that involves the linear pair theorem. In this particular case, we are given two lines that intersect at point M. We're asked to find the value of X and the measure of angle LMO and OMN. I have again identified them with color because that's easier for my brain than trying to muddle through all the different rows. What do I know? What was I given here? I can see from the given diagram that LMO and OMN are a linear pair. And using the linear pair theorem, I know that they are supplementary. Based on the fact that they are supplementary, I can say that the measure of LMO plus the measure of OMN will be equal to 180 degrees by the definition of supplementary angles. I then can do some substitution. You'll see that this is a pretty common thing that we do. We come up with our givens. We write a geometric relationship based on our given information. We do some substitution and then we solve an algebraic expression. So if I were to do this, I end up with 12x minus 60 equals 180. 12x equals 240x equals 20. And I'm hopeful that that is correct and that you come up with the same information. And so we have actually solved the first part of this problem, which was finding the value of x. The next thing that we are asked to do is to find the measure of each individual angle. And I can do that by taking its algebraic representation and doing some substitution. I now know the value of x, so I can substitute that in. This would be 140 minus 20, so the value, or the, oh, sorry, the measure of angle LMO is going to be 120 degrees. I'm gonna make sure I put my degree mark there. 
To calculate the measure of angle OMN, I can do two things. I can recognize these two angles together, add up to 180, and I can do 120 subtracted from 180. Or I can do the substitution like we did in the previous problem. And in both cases, sorry, that's just subtraction, I will end up with the same answer, I hope. And in this case, the measure of angle OMN should be 60 degrees. And that's kind of written funky, but hopefully you will see. You can check your answer. Is it reasonable? Do these two angles together add up to 180? They do, so you know you did it. All right, next we're going to move on and talk about some of the other angle relationships and some vocabulary associated with it. In example five, we are given the measure of an angle and its supplement. If you remember, Supplementary angles are angles that together add up to 180. And so I went ahead and wrote that out. I drew a picture of two angles that could be supplementary. Note, I did not put them adjacent to each other. I think it's important to recognize that uh, supplementary angles do not have to be adjacent. So um, it, when possible, I give you a representation of that that helps you uh, remember that. For this, I'm going to take the measure of angle one and uh, you, it could actually be either one of these, but angle one, the angle is 3x plus seven. The other angle I was given as being 113, and I know that supplementary angles have a sum of 180 degrees. So from here, I do my algebra, and up with 3x plus 120 equals 180, 3x equals 60, Yes, ma'am. So x is equal to 20. It did not ask me to find the value of x. The problem actually asked me to find the measure of the angle, and it identified the angle as being 3x plus 7. So the angle is equal to 3x plus 7. I know that x is 20, so I substitute that in. And I end up with the angle ah, being equal to 67 degrees. I should be able to check the reasonableness of this by adding the angle, 67 degrees, to its supplement. And those together should come out to 180. I can do the same thing with complementary angles. Again, I drew two complementary angles that are not adjacent, just so you can get used to seeing that. I know that they are, um, that they have a sum equal to, uh, to 90 degrees, and I can just substitute in. In this case, I was given some very explicit information about which one was which. Angle one is 2x plus 20. Angle two is 3x plus 15. And together, they have a sum of 90 degrees. I can do some quick algebra here. Uh, 35, 55, yes. So x is equal to 10. Sorry, that should be 11. I do not need an angle, a degree sign, because this is not the measure of the angle. This is only a variable. And it is what I was asked to find. So at this point, I am done. I am going to let you fight your way through example 7. That is a great example that uses both vertical angles and uh, supplementary angles. And so I'm gonna let you delve through that. Um, I'm also gonna let you work example eight on your own. In example eight, you're gonna use the definition of right angles and angle addition postulate to solve and find the value of X. But in the interest of being mindful of your time, I want to move on and have a little English lesson because who doesn't love English? All right, so sometimes um, when you are given a verbal expression that is describing a geometric relationship, the, uh, there's a switching that takes place. The switching is uh, all the fault of English and it happens with some three very particular words. I call them stop words. 
I think that's a stop sign. Not 100% sure. But when I see the words to, from, and then, when used in a verbal description of an algebraic or geometric problem, I realize that I'm going to have to do some switching. If I take two, $2 from your wallet, I'm not going to say two minus whatever's in there. I would say whatever's in your wallet, I'm subtracting two out of. So that's sort of a linguistic thing. And I did some examples here. Three less than a number. If you just take it at its, um, if you do a straight translation, that would be three. Less is subtraction. Then means I'm going to switch some things and a number is a variable. But it's not going to be three minus n because this is a switch word. I'm going to stop. I'm going to flip them. And my real algebraic expression should read n minus three. And you can see I do that a couple of different times here for the different kinds of words. That can come into play. Another thing that we saw in a previous example, but I did not really elaborate on, is that there are some other words, statements, in, in geometry specifically, that have an algebraic expression equivalency. So if I talk about an angle or the angle, I don't know what it is. So typically we can use a variable to represent the angle. And it can be any variable you want. It can be your initial, I don't care but it is going to be a variable. We don't know what its measure is. We can talk about the complement of that angle. The complement is going to be whatever's left after I subtract away the value of my angle from 90, because two angles together have to be 90 degrees if they're complementary. Similarly, the supplement algebraically means take the angle away from 180, and that's going to be the supplement to that angle. All right, folks, so why am I belaboring all of this good vocabulary and linguistics? That's because we are going to actually, here's my paper that's not written on, we are going to solve some problems using these constructs. This is good practice. SATs, ACTs, PSATs love this kind of thing. So it's, it's good to have under your belt, and it can be a little confusing, so practice definitely helps. We are going to find the measure of an angle. So I know that that's going to be an x, because it says it up here, or the variable of your choice. If its measure, so its measure is, in our case, typically means equal. 60 is just a number. More can be represented in algebraically with an addition sign. And here's our stop word. The stop word gives me pause and tells me that I'm going to need to do some switching. The next, so it is 60 more than that of its supplement. So here I see that word, its supplement, and I know algebraically that is equivalent to 180 minus x. So I have the beginnings of an algebraic equation that can be used to represent this relationship. I know that it's going to be x is equal to but because I went ahead and drew my switch sign here, I know that I'm gonna to have to flip these two quantities. So instead of writing 60 plus 180 minus X, I'm gonna do 180 minus X plus 60. And you may be thinking, or you might not be, um, addition is associative and commutative, so the order I do this in doesn't matter, and that is true. But it's a good habit to be in because subtraction and division are not associative and commutative and their order does matter. So just get in the habit of always switching. This looks funny. People tend to think, oh, the variables are going to cancel out. Um, but they actually don't. If I don't know why I rewrote that. If I add x to both sides, I'm going to go ahead and show you so you see it. If I add x to both sides, I end up with 2x equals 240. And now if I divide, I get x equals 120 degrees. Well, it doesn't equal 120 degrees, it equals 120. All right, so the measure of an angle is 120. And if I subtract 120 from 180, I get 60. And then that would, of course, be 60 less than the angle. So it seems to work. I can check the reasonableness of it. This example is going to be similar, but it uses the word complement instead of supplement. So uh, let's 
Sure, let's just walk through it. An angle, if is measure is 78 less, and here's my stop word, so I'm gonna do some switching. And it's complement, I'm gonna write as 90 minus x. I always protect that in parentheses so that I don't mess things up. And I have my algebraic expression after I switch this being 90 minus x minus 78. And hopefully if you do the algebra associated with this, you'll end up with x equals six. If you don't, let me know and I can help you. All right, I'm gonna skip example three. I'm gonna move on to example four because example four is a little bit different. Find the measure of an angle. So we know we're gonna represent this with an X, but it's not then saying it's measure. So we're going to just hold that for a moment. It's talking about its supplement. And we know that its supplement, I'm gonna put a colon here. The supplement is 180 minus X. Here's my equality is 10 more is addition. Here's my switch word. So I know I'm gonna to have to flip things. And then it says three, which is just three times. It's gonna be multiplication, I don't care what goes in here, three times that of its complement. And I know its complement is the 90 minus X. So there's my equation, folks. It looks a little strange. Let's go ahead and write it out after we do this switch three times its complement more than 10. All right, from here, we're gonna do some algebra. I'm gonna distribute first 270 minus 3x plus 10. I'm gonna add 3x to both sides. I end up with 180 plus 2x equals, I'm gonna combine those 280 subtract 180 from both sides, I end up with x equals 50. That is the measure of my angle using all sorts of complicated, weird vocabulary. Y'all have been very patient today. That is our lesson, and I hope that you have a great rest of your day.